I've only got eight pages of notes, so it shouldn't be in a couple hours. <laughs> no, actually, it'll go pretty quick. I want to talk to you today about a subject that <clears throat> I've learned a lot about over the years. Um, whenever I teach, I like to do topical subjects. Um, I'm not a great Bible scholar, so I like to teach on topics that have been near and dear to my heart and things that um, the Lord's helped me with over the years. I want to talk to you today about dealing with the overcoming fear. A lot of fear in the world today, and God doesn't want his children living in fear. There's a lot of that that takes place. It's probably one of the greatest barriers to living a victorious Christian life. Um, and it's good for us, I think, to learn what the Bible has to say about fear uh, so that we can have victory over it. But more importantly, that we can pass it on to our children and teach them so that they don't feel fear. Um, <clears throat> you know, a Christian becomes gripped with fear, uh, really unable to enjoy his Christian life, his family, uh, his church, just pretty much anything he does because he's so consumed with fear. God doesn't want his children living that way. He doesn't want us to live in fear. And he addresses it throughout the Bible. He gives us verses to help, and uh, I want to discuss a little bit of that. Again, we're going to talk about five different kinds of fear that I've dealt with over the years that I think hopefully will be a blessing to you. Hopefully, will maybe help some of you. First fear is the fear of unplanned circumstances. You know, sometimes things just come into our lives that really can't completely catch us off guard, totally unexpected. We weren't planning on as a result, we were totally unprepared for them. Um, events come into our lives that, that take a turn in the direction that we weren't figuring out. You know, we, we've got goals, we've got plans to do certain things in our lives, and for one reason or another, those, change, those plans completely change and do a 180. And it kind of throws us for a loop. And, uh, if we're not careful, fear will overtake us because of that. <clears throat> yeah, let's take a look at the Lord and his apostles. Turn to Matthew chapter 26 with me. <clears throat> Real familiar passage when uh, Jesus just had last couple years in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was talking, he was waiting to be arrested. And uh, put down in Judges 3 55 and 56, we will read the whole account. <clears throat> Matthew 26, 55 and 56. It says, in that same hour said Jesus to the multitude, are you come out as against the thief with swords and staves to take me? I sat daily with you teaching the temple, and you laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. And this last verse is what I want to focus on. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. I know that you, but every time I read that this verse, it kind of bothers me. Why did they do that? Why did they just gone? They, they'd been with him for three and a half years, every single day, 24, hour, 24 hours a day, and they came and arrested Jesus, and they, just, they all they all shook him, they fled. Why did they do that? I believe it's because of fear. I believe it was fear that consumed them completely. I think they were fearful for their own safety and freedom, but I think more importantly, they didn't understand what was going on. They, they still didn't grasp the fact that Jesus had to go and pay the penalty for our sin. They hadn't fully really come to that yet. He was their leader. He was their king. He was their savior. He was their teacher. He was their best friend. I mean, he was with them literally for three and a half years, every single day, all day long. And now he's being taken away. And they just didn't understand. I believe they were in fear. I think they, they, they you know, what are they going to do? You know, they've forsaken all. They've given up their livelihoods. Their lives were dependent around following Jesus. And now he was being taken away. He was going to be killed. And I believe they were totally consumed with fear because it was something they weren't expecting. It happened so quickly and they reacted accordingly. And I believe it was fear that consumed them. But sometimes we face un unplanned circumstances too. You know, maybe a loved one is seriously hurt or even dies totally unexpectedly. Maybe someone we're close to gets cancer, some other serious illness, or maybe even us. <clears throat> Fear 
here's a natural reaction in those, in those kids. There needs to be dealt with quickly <clears throat> so it doesn't overpower us and discourage us <clears throat> or allow us to get bitter or even angry with God. You know, when something like that happens, things in your lives that are totally unexpected, um, hard things, difficult things, things that, you know, are just impossible to understand, it's easy to get angry. It's easy to get bitter. And I, and I believe those emotions are, are centered in fear because we're fearful of what took place. We don't have a handle. We don't have a control. On it. Someone we love gets sick and, and or dies, and we can't do a thing about it. You know, it, it's, it's difficult. It, it, it's, it's fearful. <clears throat> but if we don't get it taken care of, it will overpower us. And that's exactly what Satan wants to do. Satan, I won't say he's the author of fear, but Satan loves to create fear in, in Christians. You know, he lost he lost our soul when he got saved, so he lost he lost the overall war. But he still does everything he can to discourage us. I believe he uses fear a lot. Let's take a look at God's word to it. So go back to Isaiah chapter 43. We're gonna look at a lot of verses today. I can try to teach a whole lot better than I can. And there 43, verse 1 through 3. It's now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. And when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall a flame kindle on thee. He's referring to unplanned circumstances there. <clears throat> Verse 3 For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy name, Ethiopian Sea before thee. Verse 2 is talking about unplanned circumstances, talking about the waters and the floods and the fire and the soul, things that come into our lives that we're not expecting. What does he tell us? Fear not, for I am with thee. God constantly tells us to fear not. Psalm chapter 46. Two pages back. <laughs> Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, therefore will not we fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be trembled, though the mountain shake with the swelling thereof, sea lot. Whatever circumstances are current that, that happen in our lives, whatever comes into our lives, don't be afraid. Fear not. God's got a hand on it. And then Romans 8 28, you don't have to turn there, just tells us that we know that all things work together for good. And that's talking about everything in our lives. We're not to be fearful. God knows what's going on. He has a plan for everything that takes place. <clears throat> Fear of unplanned circumstances. And then secondly, <clears throat> one that I believe is probably the most common and very real is the fear of the future. Fear of the future. You know, since 9-11 and covid um, of course, our whole, our whole world is shaken. Our whole world is thrown into a tizzy. And, uh, there was fear just everywhere. But I see a lot of it in Christians. Even to this day, they're still fearful. You know, what's what's going to happen? What's going to happen next year? What's going to happen five years from now? What's going to happen when my kids become adults? And, and it's, it's a very real concern. and certainly understandable. You know, there's, there's crime, there's violence, there's just natural disasters, diseases, economic uncertainty, unemployment. And there's a lot of things out there that can shake our world and that do that rock our world and can create fear. <clears throat> all these things cause us to worry and fear. God doesn't want us to dwell there. He doesn't want us to live in fear. You know, these things can get worse. You know, what, what's going to be like when your kids grow up? You know, my kids are all grown, but you guys, well, you still have kids at home. What's going to be like for them? 
That's a very real concern. <clears throat> and then we worry and become fearful about personal decisions that we've got to make in the future that we know we're going to have to make. But I know I certainly went through all that. You know, what are my kids going to do when they get out of school? They're going to go to college, and if so, where? They're going to get married. Who will they marry? <clears throat> where should I live? What job should I get? Should I accept that promotion or that transfer? What church should I go to? Just so many things that this decision that we have to make as time goes on that we look to in the future. <clears throat> and it's very easy to become fearful of those things, particularly knowing the circumstances and the environment and the climate of what this world is in right now. It's a very real thing. Stress and anxiety <clears throat> brings about fear in a lot of Christians today. Uh, stress is just unbelievable. But throughout, throughout the scriptures, God reminds us over and over and over again that he's in control. And that he knows and he cares about each and every circumstance in our life. And there's absolutely no reason to fear. Go Matthew chapter 6 with me. Matthew chapter 6, uh, start with verse 25. So therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, and yet for your body what you shall put on. Is all life more than meat and the body of rain? This is all part of uh, Jesus' Son on the Mount. He's talking to, to, to believers. You pull the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather under barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? Now, why take you thought for rain? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, and for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But here's the key. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Jesus is teaching, even way back then, he was teaching, don't worry about the future. Don't worry about what's going to take place. I know what you need. I'm there. I'm always there. I'm always going to be there. Seek first the kingdom of my Lord. Stay close to God. Keep your relationship right with the Lord, and he's going to take care of things. He promises that everywhere in Scripture you look. We're talking about fear. He always is prompt. He's going to meet our needs. He's going to take care of it. Back to Isaiah chapter 41. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I had to go through my Bible to find anything. <laughs> Isaiah 41. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee in the right hand of my righteousness. Again, don't worry about the future. Don't worry about what's going to happen. I'll be with you. I've got to handle it. Then Proverbs 3, verse 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 of my life verses. Here are key verses for me. They're huge. I don't feel the situation well. But Proverbs 3 and verse 6. Very applicable to what we're talking about. Okay. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That's another promise from God. We just acknowledge him. In other words, keep our relationship right with him and make him paramount first in our lives. He's going to direct our paths. And she's going to take care of everything that happens in the future. He's got to handle it. He's going to take care of it. 
Then lastly, Psalm, a few pages back, Psalm chapter 32. Verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. And then just another promise from God that he's going to take care of things. He's going to direct us. That's the fear of the future. Third one I want to talk about is fear of failure. <clears throat> That's the fear of not being able to successfully com complete a challenge that's put before us or accomplish a desired goal. Everybody struggles with this from time to time. You know, we're, we're just afraid we're not going to be able to handle it. We're not going to be able to finish it. We're not going to be able to do it. We're not going to be able to do the job that's been put before us or the challenge that we have ahead of us. Um, you know, will I be able to impress when I go to that interview for that job? You know, will I be able to speak in front of that group? Whatever it might be. I have to get through men's Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> That's real fear. Mm -hmm. Will that person okay. completely reject me if I try to witness to it? That's fear. Well, why, why do we have a hard time witnessing to someone? We know that Satan fights it tremendously, but because we're, we're afraid of, of rejection. We're afraid that person's not going to want to hear what we have to say and it's not going to go well. So fear prevents that. If I start this project, am I going to be able to finish it? <clears throat> Fear of failure is a very real thing and it affects all of us to one degree or another. It's extremely important that we don't let that fear overcome us because it can become debilitating to the point where we'll be so afraid that we're going to fail that we don't even try. When you look at that from a, a ministry standpoint, um, that can be really, really um, terrible for you as an individual, for us as individuals, for the church, for our ministry. You know, if we've got, God's given us a, a ministry to do, to teach a Sunday school class or uh, whatever it might be, to sing, to sing in front of the church or whatever it might be. And if we allow fear to grip us and not allow us to do what God calls us to do, well, then, first of all, we're not going to serve the way we're supposed to, you know, to do what God wants us to do. And we're going to lose the blessing of God in the gospel. It can become fear, fear of failure can be a very, very debilitating. But I believe the fear of failure is rooted in pride. I think that's where fear of failure comes from. Um, of course, we know that God hates pride. Um, it's in the seven abominations, it's listed number one. Um, pride will, God hates pride, but I believe failure is rooted there. You know, we don't want to admit <clears throat> to or face the fact that we might not be able to do something. We might not succeed at that. No one wants no one wants people to see us fail, to see us fall on our face. And so fear might prevent us from even trying because of that. As a result, it denies us the blessing that God's got for us. You know, he asks you to do something and if we don't follow through and do it, not only not being obedient, but we're robbing ourselves of the blessing that God's got for us. He, he blesses his followers. He blesses those that serve him. <clears throat> I guess it really boils down to just a lack of trust in God. And fear can have an effect on that. So when we allow fear of failure to control us, we're limiting God and not allowing him the opportunity to possibly accomplish something great through us. Go back to Exodus chapter 4 with me. Exodus, Exodus chapter 4. These things are declarations, they're not for hearing. <laughs> they're lovely there. <laughs> Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, Oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent. Eloquent. Neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, for I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb 
or deaf, or the seeing of the blind. Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. We're all familiar with passage against Moses was arguing with the Lord about Moses. God wanted Moses to lead the people out of Egypt, and he was trying to get out of it. Why? He thought he would fail. He didn't think he was eloquent enough to speak her. He didn't think he had the ability. He didn't think he had the strength to do it. And God just sold him and actually got him up getting a little bit upset with him eventually. But he said, just go. I will be with you. And that's the promise to you and me today. No matter what we're facing, no matter what we're dealing with, no matter what the challenge is before us, how great or small it might be, God will be with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Through it all. Mm-hmm. There's no reason for us to fear failure. <clears throat> He'll help us each and every time. But we've got a lot of the opportunity to do so. We've got to succumb to that fear and allow God to take, take over. Don't you, don't you think sometimes God has to shake us to get us back to uh, to believe and trust in Him when we have fear? No questions. No question. And God does that. Well, to direct us in a lot of things, but absolutely, yeah. God doesn't want us to be fearful. And you need to read the scripture, and there's hundreds of verses talking about fear in the Bible, and they're all do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. Trust the Lord. Fourthly, <clears throat> fourth fear is the fear of man. This one doesn't really get, I don't, don't think it discussed a whole lot, but it affects the decisions we make, the place we go, the things we do. The fear affects almost everyone, and I think it affects us a lot more than we realize. What is the fear of me? It's being concerned about what people think about what we're going to do, about decisions we make, actions we take, where we go, what we do. Should that be there? Should we really be concerned about what man thinks? I think that's one of my wife's biggest fears, what people want to think. Yeah. It's it's a very real thing. <clears throat> it causes us to worry so much about what other people think that we don't live our lives and make decisions based upon <clears throat> what God wants us to do. We make decisions based upon what we think will satisfy people. We will get people to approve. It's exactly the opposite of what the Bible teaches. God wants us to do what He wants us to do. He wants us to follow His leading, His commands. Not the leads and commands of man. <clears throat> what happens? It gets our focus off of what it should be on, and to very lightly cause us not to do God's will for our own lives. Look in John chapter twelve with me. You're still in Proverbs. Go to Proverbs twenty nine while you're there. Let's jump around here. Go to Proverbs chapter twenty nine. Work for the Twenty nine verse twenty five. It says, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso put his trust in the Lord shall be saved. That pretty much sums it all, all up right there. The fear of man brings a snare, but putting your trust in the Lord you'll be saved. That's the theme of what God's trying to teach us. Now go to John chapter 12. Probably will wear mine out. Mm-hmm. Got Nick after and blood on the line with morning guys. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, guys. John chapter 12, verses 42 and 43. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should not put out. They should be put out of the synagogue for they love the praise of man more than the praise of God. Again, another example they were afraid of what man thought. Here they got saved, but they didn't want people to know about it because they feared man. They were afraid of what man might think. And unfortunately, that affects Christians today. We, we have a tendency to worry about that much more than we should. And then lastly, First Thessalonians chapter 2. In 
verse 4. No, that's not the right verse. Yeah, it is. As we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, who has tried our faith, tried our hearts. <clears throat> what was that verse? First Thessalonians 2, verse 4. That as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, <clears throat> even so we speak. Apostles were speaking and, and preaching about the Lord, not worrying about what man had to say, but please, trying to please God. Falling to peer pressure, not standing up for what's right, missing an opportunity to share the gospel. That's the fear of man. <clears throat> Being afraid of what people might say or might think of us. I think, but, I, I think yeah, that's an it. interesting way to also flip what you're saying is we as Christians have a responsibility to, to not judge according to appearances. My life verse is John 7, 24. We do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. So we cause people to worry about fear, mm -hmm. people's opinions of us, because many people um, go through life judging and basing their opinion on what is just on the surface right. when they don't have a clue what's really going on. Yeah. So exactly. we perpetuate it. Yeah. Yeah. Man, man perpetuates fear. No yeah. question. No question. Thank you. The guy wants to be concerned what he thinks, not what man thinks. Back to Psalm 56. I know we're jumping around a lot, guys, but like I said, I want God's word to speak to me much more than me. Psalm 56. Verses three and four. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. And then verse 11, also in Psalm 56. In God, have I put my trust. I will not be afraid of what man can do under me. So those verses teach us why in the world we have to be afraid of man. God says, what's he, what's he going to do? As long as I'm with you, you're in good shape. He assures us throughout his word that man is not to be feared. Only what God thinks of us and what we say, what we do, where we go, is what we ought to be concerned about. Disregarding what man has to say, we're not the answer to man. And lastly, the last fear I think we all deal with is the fear of death. Fear of death is very real to most people. Some people come to grips with it, accepting it as a part of life. But most people fear when, where, and how they're going to die. For a lost person, that fear is very, very real, very strong, and should be. They've got a lot to fear. As a Christian, we shouldn't fear death. We first of all don't need to fear death, but we actually shouldn't. Because if we're saved, we have such a much better place waiting for us. We live this world, we're going to be in a whole lot better place than we live now. And I look forward to it. And I'm in no hurry to get there, but I look forward to it. <clears throat> God's prepared a place in heaven for every single believer. We're going to spend eternity with a sinless, perfect, Holy, loving God, forever and ever, ever. So there's no reason to fear death. <clears throat> Got a bunch of verses. I'm not going to go to all of them for the sake of time. Psalm 23 and verse 4, it's the 23rd Psalm. You have to know it very well. It talks about, I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Don't be afraid of that. I've got my trust in the Lord. He's going to take care of me. I know where I'm going. In the New Testament, go to 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 55 through 57. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're all going to die one day, but as Christians, we've got the victory. 
We're going to be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. The death for a Christian certainly is not to be feared, but rather should be embraced with hope and comfort, knowing what our future holds. So just to summarize, um, <clears throat> all fears of life brings our way. We talked about unplanned circumstances, future, failure, fear of man and death. They all can be overcome and conquered with a greater trust and belief in God. It simply boils down to us strengthening our relationship with the Lord, trusting his word. You know, our source of strength, strength and assurance is the Bible. It's God's word. And it's filled with verses. We just, I did a study on this and we came up with a bunch of them, but there's probably 10 for each one I use. Just the Bible is just filled with verses by the Lord. We're not to fear. God's got a handle on it. He's with us no matter what our circumstances are, no matter what comes our way. God's going to take care of us. We get a stronger understanding of God and obedience. To him. Obey God. Obey his commandments. Do what he's told us to do. If we do that, we're going to strengthen our relationship with him. We're going to draw closer to him. And we're going to have his blessing upon our lives. <clears throat> God doesn't want us to live in fear, but rather to trust him, his son, and his word. Live a healthy, happy, and prosperous life. One without fear, one with peace, joy, comfort, and contentment. God's good. God doesn't want us to live in fear. Fear not. There's just dozens and dozens of times where God tells us that in His Word. So he doesn't want us to fear any of these things that we've talked about or any other fear that you might that might come into your life. Know that the the, the, the devil uses fear. <clears throat> he used anything he can to trip up a person. We know that. But he uses fear in such a way that <clears throat> it really can be rehabilitated. It can really tear us down. Because if we're not keeping our relationship right with the Lord, we're not staying close with him, if we allow Satan to get a wedge in there, we use fear to drag us down. Don't allow it to happen. Stay right with the Lord. Stay in his word. Keep your relationship strong with him. That's where God wants to be. That's all. Yeah. That's a word of prayer. Dearly Father, Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, thank you that you're with us no matter what life brings our way. Lord, we live in a, a difficult time, a difficult world. With all the, the things out there that can bring about fear and uncertainty. And yet, Lord, you constantly remind us to trust you, lean on you, to draw close to you, and to fear not. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to do so. Help us to be the men of God that you'd have us to be. Help us to lead our families uh, in this area and in all areas for you. Lord, help us to be uh, the strong Christians that you want us to be. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You have the most important fear or not. What's that? Fear of our wives. <laughs> no, that was still recording. <laughs> I don't know those right now, but there's some worry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Thanks, guys. Be strong. Have a great day. All right. Comments? I did a study on fear a while back.